It's really easy when we're grading to get fixated on our display. After all, the display is our only point of contact with the image. But it's also important to remember that display and image are not one and the same. Crafted properly, the image is much larger, much more than the display, and the display is simply a way in, a window. I can still vividly remember the absolute terror that I felt as a kid the first time I watched Captain Hook condemn one of his traitorous pirates to the boo box at the beginning of the movie Hook. What I can't remember is the screen that I saw this happen on. You see my point? So how do we embrace an image-centric rather than a display-centric approach to grading? What does that look like? The key lies in thinking photographically, in terms of light, shadow, dimension, and contour, rather than graphically, in terms of lift, gamma, gain, windows, and the like. Unfortunately, this is a bit trickier than it sounds. The tools, techniques, and culture of color grading are all skewed toward the latter approach and tend to fixate on correcting a signal rather than crafting an image. So today, we're gonna to throw that playbook out and take a look at five fundamentals for grading photographically. The first fundamental to grading photographically is to work in a log or a logarithmic color space using a downstream transform to map you from that color space into your display color space. Why is this important? First, because it's gonna allow you to preserve the full dynamic range of your source material. Second, and just as important, because log color spaces mimic the way our eyes respond to light in the real world. For example, if I'm grading a shot in log and I double its offset value, the result is gonna be very similar to what I'd see if I were standing back on that set and I doubled the amount of light in the scene. So because the response of a log curve to lighting changes mimics that of our eye, you can make intuitive adjustments that look and feel like you're manipulating physical light and shadow. If instead you choose to work in your display color space, you've already sacrificed a lot of your dynamic range and your adjustments won't have the same naturalistic response. The second fundamental to grading photographically is to anchor your work in exposure. It's always amazing to me how much energy is devoted to exposure in pre-production and then in production, only for it to be immediately discarded in color in favor of piecemeal adjustments inherited from video engineers and not from filmmakers. Why is this? Why does this happen? It really goes back to our first fundamental about choosing the right working color space. If you get this wrong and you find yourself working in your display color space, you simply don't have the latitude to move exposure. Your image now only has enough dynamic range to fill that of the display that it's going to, so the moment you try to move exposure, you end up with clipped shadows or highlights. Because of this, we abandon exposure and instead focus on the way our limited dynamic range is distributed, essentially the contrast curve. But now that we're working in log space, the full dynamic range of the original camera negative is available to us and we can start with a foundation of good exposure. Remember that example about doubling the amount of light in the grade or on set? There's a word for this, stop. It's the standard unit of measurement for exposure and one of the key metrics used throughout the filmmaking process, except for some reason in the color grade. It's time for us to change that. Exposure expressed in stops provides a familiar, meaningful shorthand for filmmakers and it's the natural starting point for grading a shot. If I can start with a foundation of nailing my base exposure, it provides the ideal platform on top of which I can start to tackle contrast and other more fine-toothed adjustments. The next fundamental to grading photographically is to think in terms of objective color temperature. This is a far cry from our normal approach to warming or cooling an image, which tends to be very subjective. It involves us freehanding our RGB balls until we arrive at a pleasing result. So what's the problem with that? First, it's imprecise, often introducing subtle, unwanted pink or green shifts into our image. Second, it's inefficient. Because we're using a single image as the sole basis for our adjustment, whatever unique solution of red, green, and blue we arrive at is unlikely to work on any other shot without requiring further manipulation. 
By contrast, if we can start with a foundation of dialing in our color temperature using non-subjective math, we get quick, accurate, and consistent results. The same ones we would have gotten if we'd rated our camera for a higher or lower color temperature on set. From here, there's far less left for us to do by hand and more time for us to do it well. The fourth fundamental to grading photographically is to use windows for lighting control. Now that you've got your exposure and your color temperature set, you're ready to start thinking about the contour and contrast of your image. How would you tackle this if you were still on set? With lighting control, right? For example, you might flag a source off of a distracting object in the background, or bring in some negative fill for your subject. With Resolve and other grading tools, we have the power to window, tweak, and track anything in the frame, but if we're not doing this in a dimensional, lighting-motivated way, it ends up feeling flat, graphical, and more like an overt manipulation than a refinement. To use windows more photographically, here's three principles to keep in mind. First, keep it simple. Most window adjustments look best with a basic primary grade, and they should be as broad and soft as possible. Second, think of your adjustment in terms of three dimensions. Does what it's doing to the frame make sense in that context? Finally, it's almost always better to knock something down than it is to build something up, because it's easier to sell a shadow than it is a source. The final fundamental to grading photographically is to use a good print stock. This concept is largely forgotten today, but for a century or more, print stock played a key role in defining the look of a film, providing a consistent baseline of creative contrast and colorimetry, and helping visually unify the images. So how does this work in a digital workflow? At the beginning of this talk, I mentioned a downstream transform from your log working space to your gamma display space. Your print stock, or look layer, should be the very last set of adjustments that come before this transform, and they should be the same adjustments across all shots. The best way to get started with this approach is to build a look yourself and use it to establish a baseline level of contrast, saturation, and overall warmth or coolness. Thinking and working photographically in our grades can feel awkward and foreign at first but this has more to do with needing to discard faulty concepts than with the difficulty of the new ones. One of the defining strengths of this approach is its simplicity. We exchange dozens of complicated tools for the intuitive concepts of light, shadow, color, and contour. The more we can learn to work in this way, the more we can harness the full power of motion images and transcend the screens we view them through. If you'd like to get a look at a hands-on demo of this approach, be sure to check out my next video.